part by Intel, Mercedes-Benz, Vodafone, DHL, Alienware, Logitech G, and PaySafeCard. Welcome back everyone to Hamburg, the beautiful city with the beautiful port and the beautiful Dota as well. It's just around the corner for Gaming versus Virtus Prize, our next series, all best of twos in the group stages. Welcome to day number one of ESL1 Hamburg. Our panel members are ready for draft number one, which will start momentarily. We've got Purge alongside Fogged. Um, gents, as we look ahead to this uh, draft, we've already made mention of the fact, Kevin, that it is going to be a tricky draft for forward gaming. So what do they need to make sure they do do well? I would say um, pick their lineup so that they get to do what they want, which is probably at some point five-man death ball, so that Rezo can get that 95% kill participation, and then <laughs> also make sure that they don't super lose their lanes by getting all picked by VP. If VP picks um, better uh, better laning heroes that also counter uh, forward gaming's heroes, I think they might get crushed. Okay, and um, we mentioned how dangerous they are in the draft. They can do whatever they want. Virtus Pro, can't they? Yeah, I decide to ban. I don't know, whatever five bans they don't care about. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is probably just getting your overall stable lineup that you're used to playing with from forward. And then for, in particular, because I mean, I was really excited for this matchup because I really like the forward guys and I think they're really up on the rise. And it's, it's really unfortunate that they don't have UR. But I think for Excalibur, I think they have to pick him a hero that's just going to... It's just a hero that will do well no matter what he's versed against no one. So, like, if he gets Alina, ban TA. And then he'll have a pretty good matchup no matter what he's against. Like, something very... Very like just stable like that. Is there is there a is there a, a bit of uh, Virtus Pro that you sort of think they might target Excalibur as the weak link? Obviously not not as a weak player because he's number one on the ladder right now. We know he can play. Absolutely. But but as a player within the team, take away three or four of his comfort heroes, maybe maybe that hurts him more. I can see that. I mean, historically Excalibur hasn't been on a top team in a while. He has occasionally weaved in and out of them as stand-ins and stuff. But he does always have, he, in the past at least, he's had consistency issues. So, yeah, I mean, obviously he still plays pubs at an extremely high level, just like he did back then. But, um, you know, if you grab a player and throw him in a competitive scene, that sometimes is the issue. So, right. I, I think targeting him is not a terrible idea. Okay, uh, Brood banned out in the first phase by Ford. They don't want any of that stuff going on. Uh, Virtus Pro can pick it pretty much wherever they want, and they've shown that they can do that in the past. Wyvern, which we mentioned earlier on, possibly one of the top picks of the entire tournament. It's the first pick we've seen here on the main street. Mm -hmm. so, I love this hero, to be honest. I think it's a hero that you can't just like whoa. pick and it be in Wyvern, but you need to have like some type of follow-up, and VP's always sure that they, when they pick it, they're going to have like Enigma, Earth Spirit, Shaker, Lina, something that's going to be there to follow up. And uh, Drow yeah, Marana Kevin. on the other side. Now, I, I'm I'm licking my lips at that because I love that as a combination. Um, but it's, it's, a Virtus, it's Virtus Pro. And that's it's normally into, what they want to do. And it's into Wyvern. Yes. Wyvern does not mind playing too much versus Drow lineups. You've got your great curse set up usually for the most part, and... Yeah, Cold Embrace is always going to be pretty nice for Strow. I agree, but if, if you don't burn Arrow and they burn a Cold Embrace, that guy's died, dead anyways, unless you pull Creeps around or something. I, I think there's yeah. good things. And Murano with Draw Aura, like mid-game, is disgusting. Because you just have like an extra 60 damage. You, you don't even need your mouse anymore. And even if you do have it, just throw Leap in and any support dies if they don't instantly you know, Glimmer or something like that. Saw that one coming, actually. <laughs> I was just saying yeah, the Enigma. Yeah, like the Enigma is uh, <laughs> another one of those that they've been playing quite a lot. Invoker, Tiny, Drow, Bane, Dazzle, TB, Enigma yep. are the seven favoured uh, that we picked out for Virtus Pro in their qualifiers so far. Mm. So instead, maybe focusing more on teamfight, because you could do Winner's Curse into Black Hole combos or yep. separate the important heroes and go for the teamfight win. It also ruins, it's a lane ruiner, because like your Drow... Or anybody doesn't want to lane versus Enigma because you just lose so many so many creeps because of it. Like he just keeps denying mm -hmm. constantly with the Eidolons, and you just get set back. Your levels are just not there. Of so all the uh, of all the teams that we've got at this particular tournament, um, the team that plays more Invoker than any other is Virtus Prime. Is that on the table here? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they seem more flexible. I, th I think I watched a replay where they were playing um, Quaswex, like basically just adjusting yeah. TI meta. Topson really showing everybody that this is super vi viable. Yeah. Go Spirit Vessel, make stuff happen in one of the games. Uh, no one played was was really well too, really good too. Silence a ban out for Virtus Prime. And global for yeah. forward. Yeah. Just trying to keep the team fight advantage they already secured. It's a really good counter to Enigma. Sap really wants somebody to pick a damn Lycan. They, I mean, yeah, it really does. High win rate hero. 
Yeah. So it absolutely makes uh, a lot of sense in some ways, but against a Wyvern, it's also kind of one of those potentially dangerous heroes. But We haven't had a, a huge amount of time. It's obviously a PL band out there by forward uh, so far, but the one that I focused on before we came in, to, just to get an idea of what's being picked, what's out there, um, was the PvP esports uh, tournament held in Singapore. Wyvern top pick at that one, 39 uh, picks. Also had a 66.7% win rate, which was pretty astonishing for the most picked. Um, the other one was Crystal Maiden, 59% win rate, 22 picks, also in the top eight. Haven't seen many CMs here. Oh, I, I feel like I haven't seen CM in I mean, look, we haven't seen it at all yet at yeah. uh, ESL One Hamburg. Last two tournaments, I feel like that I was at, I didn't see a whole mm. crazy amount of Crystal Maiden either. Also saw a lot of bands on Tiny, Trent, Weaver, IO, and Brood, so no surprise that uh, Forward have definitely stuck with the band meta there. You just named all heroes that have been banned, yeah. basically, in the first phase. <laughs> and on the VP side, I think it's actually kind of interesting. I, I mean, I guess all the heroes banned in first phase were all very lane domination, but VPs especially, like mm. Trees does stupid good base damage, uh, trades so well with the Leech Seed, and ha saves your towers and other lanes. Axe wins your lanes, Ogre wins your lanes. It's it's basically Storm. those those VP, except for Storm. Yeah, but that's the odd ban there, isn't it? Why why that ban? Is that something that they're planning around themselves? I would say surgical counter to strong team fight heroes. Spread them out a little bit, and then uh. you can pick them off one by one with better mobility. It's usually a good solution against like a, a really strong team fight lineup. Highest so rated picks yeah. on the other side uh, right now, an AA. Um, could fit into there. Pudge, not so sure about that one. Um, Pudge, it really likes a bad as well. Yeah, it too. does. Yeah. Yeah. It does seem. It's more on a counter against the arrow, potentially. Makes some sense. Uh, Invoker band. So that was the one we were we were looking at for Virtus Pro. It was one of those heroes they played an awful lot in the qualifiers and fits very well with their opening tunes. Gone. PL yeah. would have super countered their Marana too, gap closer, and then yeah. she basically isn't going to be able to deal with Goodle. Yeah, both both heroes, right? Drow and Mirana just never like playing versus any type of gap closer like that. And illusion heroes, just always the nightmare of Drow. You can itemize to make up for it, but yeah, it's, Not it's never enough, yeah. never your best. You have to be like way ahead. Yeah. Good smart bands from forward. Let's see where they go with their uh, third pick. I dare say they're very experienced banning against uh, while they're running a Drow stride. Just felt like uh, one of those things at TI that they did. That it's like any, any time they got drow, they had a pretty straightforward game. And then when they got knocked out, it was basically like, oh, they, people finally started just banning the drow and dealing with whatever they had. Bane, Bane on one was, side. Bane was one that I was really expecting for them because it's a BKB cancellator through Black Hole. It's just distance. It works really well with Marana and it's a strong laner. I did not expect a Sven. Uh, yeah. No, that's a little out of left field. So, what's your thought with it? Like, Sven obviously can do a mix of like lane pushing and AFK jungling really hard. In, in some ways, does he. Because he gap closes and can farm so fast, maybe he can like get a fast blink echo or something, and then win a fight against a like a Marana or a, a Mar or a Drow Ranger. For me, it's a lot about the Warcry, especially for Drow. You just okay. pop Warcry, you get like your whole team has 20 armor, and then these like agi heroes that want to be staying far back just get gap closed, and you that's have true. 20 armor on top. So you're just running really fast at them, and you're super tanky. So yeah, that's true. If you pop God Strength and Warcry, like I don't see him. Oh, if he gets frost out, it's not a big deal. It's just yeah. going to be a matter of time until he gets unsilenced or something. Definitely didn't expect to see that one, but now we've got like, we've got combo on combo on combo for VP too. If they get a nice curse into a good black hole, we've got a Sven following up with the cleave. That can work really well. And they've got the damage mitigation coming through because the Enigma, I mean, we'll see what he itemizes for this game. I mean, we'll probably just, it'll probably still just be the BKB blink, but he could go for some type of just tanky items because now they've got the Sven with the Warcry. They could opt to go for like Guarding Greaves and he just runs in or maybe Crimson Guard in particular versus Drow. They do have pretty good uh, anti Sven solutions with the Bane, though. They do. It's like either Bane, uh, Grip, or Nightmare is going to work out really well. Played one game with the Sven at uh, TI8. It was against Serenity. It's the only time that uh, Virtus Prime played it in the last six months. I think that's the only time anybody's played in the last six yeah. months. <laughs> Feels like that. But a lot, of, lot of other carries had to get nerfed. I mean, why would you ever pick Sven over, um, you know, Doppelganger on a two second cooldown at here's, level uh, 25? You know? here's, here's a fun fact for you, though. Virtus Pro have picked Sven at least once in every one of the last four ESL1 tournaments. Good for them. That could also be, uh, we don't know that that's a carry. That could be Roger, right? Please, could be. No. God, no. What do you mean? All right, could, he's got some be. beautiful Stormhammer yeah. talents, but that hero is, that's all he's got. He's, as got, a he's the Warcry. He's though. got Warcry and a stun. I'm that's just, it. I'm just saying it could still be a flex. I want it to Come be on. viable, but it's, <laughs> it's just not good. It's, it's a farmer. That's a farming Sven. I, I do love Phoenix, though. I think uh, against a right-clicking melee core, like TB or Sven, that is the easiest way to, to win that lane. You just throw Phoenix in there with another decent offlane hero, 
or, or offlane support, and you just punish the crap out of them. Yeah, last time they played it uh, at TI against Simmons, it was Ramses on it. So what do you think about the Morphling here? I think that hero is... Morphling support. Absolutely. <laughs> no, no. I mean, uh -huh. I think Morphling is actually the best, one of the top two hero in the game at the moment. Right. I think Who's it just... the other one? Uh, uh, what was the other one I was thinking about? Uh, top two carries, I'm in. Top two carries, Morphling and Tower Void. Yeah. Those are the two most popular right now. I think this hero has, he already has built in gap, gap close versus draw ranger. People are getting really good at using the Morph ultimate now yeah. too. Like, the ulti's always yeah. seemed really like nice. was the first one that really kind of figured that out. Was it? Played it really well. Topson for me was mix. the one that mastered it. Was it? I think Arteezy yeah. showed, he displayed it and then yeah. Topson at TI just showed it. Like he took, he takes the talents. That's the big thing for yeah. me is Topson always takes waveform distance, right. morph duration, morphing allies. And he's just always be able to abuse how you yeah. can play around it. Cause in this game, he doesn't really want to turn into anyone on forward, I would think. He might be able to turn into like the Marana, but he can turn into Wyvern on his team, and then he's got that extra bonus range with Wyvern Q, and it's absolutely mass ridiculous. Wow. Oh, let's, uh, it's a support let's, man. let's um let's I just finish off the blue draft for Is Virtus it? Pro with I think it's a support man. What? It could be like support Enigma with Wyvern. That's super way more viable than uh, freaking support Sven, dude. Like I I'm if it is, I'm excited <laughs> to see it, but I there's there's no way there's position, not a better position, pick. Position five Zeus. Unless it's, I, I it could also be a support Zeus. Zeus. Yeah. Like that is that is a strange looking draft. It's, it's very it unverted pro like. I draft. like three of the heroes look great. I mean, Wyvern, Enigma, and Morphling are fantastic heroes right now in the meta. Sven and Zeus, not picked so often in forward. They look to close it out with a I mean fast paced lineup. Uh, with v a visage. VP's lineup could totally be like a Pokemon draft right there they got like lightning they got water they got like ice it's it's a, it crosses the board dude space and time as well we yeah it's like gravity there. or dark or it's something all blue as well yes yeah, shades yeah, of that whatever it's all blue yeah, yeah. I don't know. uh it's yeah weird. very unconventional draft from Virtus Pro. What, what, what does that do to your predictions gents uh purge we'll start with you it's like one of those weird things where it's hard to see the pieces fit together and i feel like it could just fall apart because they're missing things like basic <laughs> chain stunning because they have so many weird heroes I, i'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Ford Gaming. I think. I okay. think their draft looks more conventional. Yeah, I'm gonna go more conventional. Yeah, they've got the draw visage, but I've seen VP with their like, Enigma, Enigma plus one, and they're just so good at getting the combos off. So I feel like I'm gonna see a similarity. So I'm gonna go VP still. Okay. All right. One for each. Uh, one for Virtus Pro for unconventional, and uh, one for conventional, I guess, uh, for these two teams. It's a very interesting draft. We've also got a very interesting commentary team. Are they conventional and unconventional? Let's find out as we head over to Cap and Trent. I'm not entirely sure how to catch some of Paul's throws. Yeah. It's always <laughs> what like, was that? Uh, am I conventional or unconventional? I don't know how to translate that into an opening, Paul, but we're going to see forward versus Virtus Pro, which I would say is a very interesting matchup, especially yeah. since we have unconventional draft, as they were repeatedly saying about Virtus Pro. It is going yeah. to be a support Sven, uh, something that apparently Roger has been playing a decent amount in pubs lately, and I guess it's kind of like, if you think about it, just like an ogre. Yeah, it's been done in the past, right? Uh, specifically against draft strats, because, yeah. hey, it's a lot of armor. There's no other hero that really does yeah. that for you. And just like, flat out armor bonus to everyone. Um, used to be good against like, ET too, same reason. It's mm -hmm. just like this lovely little buff you can give to the team, some move speed, close the gap, get on top, but uh, that draw lineup, very scary. Yeah, I is mean, it, you can be kind of good versus a Drow Strat, but yeah. this kind of Drow Strat? Yeah. Drow, Murata, they got a Visage, like, that seems incredibly good. It definitely seems like Virtus Pro came into this and like, we have this idea, how to beat a Drow Strat, and we're just gonna let them have well, that's Basically the thing. Basically, the kind of heroes that you want from a draw strat, Yeah, right? they first picked the Wyvern, and forward still went for the draw yes. strat. So that, yes, that's exactly. when, as Virtus Pro, I feel like that's a very good sign for you. Because you're like, all right, they, they took yeah. it. And, and if you want to start off a tournament, right, and establish, like, we know how to beat a draw strategy, yeah. what better team to basically let them have it than forward, who you know is very <laughs> forward in that regard. <laughs> 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 wow, so glad to be back together. <laughs> See, you at least will kind of laugh at those jokes when I make them. Blitz always just shuts me down, man. It wow. doesn't feel good. Oh, man. All right, well, forward to draw strategy, and we'll see how they're able to execute with their stand-in, of course, of Excalibur, who is going to be uh, quite the Visage player to yeah. uh, bring in for their roster. Definitely. That's kind of one of his, like, uh, ringer heroes, you know? It's yeah. one of those things I'm sure he loves to last pick in his pubs, getting that rank number one. Uh, Visage fits right in there with a couple of those other uh, lovely uh, game winners. So, Hey, what, what do you think about the Enigma, by the way? Like, do you think that's good versus draw strategies? Because 
Uh, I don't. I don't think it is. I think uh, it has a couple of things going for it. Number one, they tend to not draft a lot of stuns. I think okay. that's pretty fair for a lot yeah. of draft strats. Like these, like agi carry, like weird heroes. Um, they have the bane for the BKB piercing, which is great. Usually, when I see uh, Enigma, it is to enable a really bad position four. They do have a Sven. I mean, yeah. He's not that great. He can play a little bit aggressive with some of Enigma's like other better timings and stuff, but what does he really do from levels one to three? It's probably going to be beneficial to pull the lane back and give him a bit of space. Yeah. It, it seems like uh, it's... Like, when I first thought an Enigma pick, the first thing I thought was, like, this is the antithesis of what everyone else is doing versus Drow Ranger strats, right? Which is, yeah. you try and actually run over the Drow Ranger, like, kill her as many times, you push down that tower, um, and just make sure that she has a bad start. This is a much more passive way to go at the draw ranger where you're you're like literally just pulling the lane back and not trying to attack her uh at all but i i could definitely see your point about the the four position and it'll still limit her on experience of course which will be quite helpful look at solo they've committed an observer ward in the base that is very unusual to attempt the courier snipe so what he's trying to do here is everyone waits till they see this all supports before they move the courier now mm -hmm. so his thought process is Everyone brings it to that tier three. So what I'm going to do is I'll put an Observer Ward. If they park it to that tier three, I'll have the vision <laughs> of it, and I'll use the Arctic Burn to still kill their courier. That'd be smart. Unfortunately, smart. it didn't work. But I, <laughs> you have to give some credit, because that was very sneaky. Yeah, Excalibur is like... I have not like, seen that move. Excalibur bought the healing stuff and everything, but he's like, do I, I don't really need the extra regen in this lane, because it's a Zeus lane against a Visage lane. Like That's not terrible. He could just play and, and wait for more stat items. So... He actually didn't bring out that initial region that you normally see. But, uh, I mean, that meant Ramses was alone for a little bit up top. It looks like he's still relatively okay. Uh, by the end of the draft, in terms of a morph game, uh, I think morphing into Marana has proved to be very successful for a lot of teams, just getting those leaps and some quick bursts and then back into the, the morphling. Whoa, Other than what, that, though, whoa, 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 whoa. What about if you morph into your own Sven? Also, morph okay. allies? Yeah, double stuns. Give, give double stuns, Whoa. double war cry. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, if they get like a winner's curse to be set up into like double stuns from double, both your spends into bolts. black hole. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> Sound good. Wait a second. You can get you can get Nimbus. They can do double Nimbus. Oh. Wow, this is filthy actually. Damn. All right. Okay. I see what you're putting out, VP. I like it. So it looks like we are going to be having a pretty passive laning phase, I would say, all around. Nice block of the arrow there from Solo. Willing to tank a lot of damage to give Ramses a bit of heal, but he may actually have just given up his life in the process. The Drow Ranger aura giving him the extra damage is all they need. They're going to be able to find him. Solo just can't escape. This Universe, uh, first blood. Lane combo looks kind of good. Bane Marana. Uh, Very yes. innovative here. Yes. By forward gaming. Forward Never thinking seen that once again. <laughs> And it's definitely, it doesn't seem like uh, Wyvern Morphling is going to be the best answer to it either. As yeah. you can see, oh, nice arrow, Universe! Ooh, that was sick. Bottom lane, Resolution is still taking a lot of damage here. And they're going to try and chase him down. Fortunately, he had the one. He still has a salve as well as a heat fairy fire. Roger, I mean, surely he had to have known that he had all that regen. Uh, uh, yeah. hmm? What? <laughs> oh? How do I get out of here? <laughs> All right, well, Roger, yeah, you do have the creep wave pushing in, so it's all fine, well, and good. He's just going to come back in. They assume he's left, but ha, surprise. He's going to storm bolt, MSS. MSS has the Malphys on him. And we'll make the dive away after that mini stun has gone to completion. All right, eventually figured things out down here, it looks like. Joe is actually, I mean, Joe's not amazing at it, but she's pretty good at dealing with Eidolons to start. That's going to be a lot of uh, extra CS he can pick up. As long as she's not getting pressured too hard. Resolution currently at a CS of 9 and 2. Yeah. Arrow combination. Starting to morph into strength. But it just doesn't seem to be enough. Ramses does manage to get the stick off. Can eat a tango if he wants to. But it feels like it's just going to be tough for uh, forward to be able to finish that one off. Battle over the runes. It was going to be Arcane Rune for Excalibur. Ramses. So they beat back both of Virtus Pro. Yeah, he's going to have two tangos here. He just needs his HP up fast because they pulled the waves. So this is like all under tower right now. And he's going to end up missing like all of this. At least yeah, in terms of last hits, but at least he's getting the XP. That, this cold embrace idea with the morphling, like that's not really that effective. No, it's terrible. <laughs> they <laughs> they gotta go the other way. It. Yeah. <laughs> keep on trying it, but uh, well, Ramsey's at least gets a little bit of HP to work with. Wyvern in general is like the support that can theoretically win almost any lane. 
Um, but unfortunately, there is one support better in Dota, and that is Bane. Mm. Uh, Bane is absolutely the king when it comes to just winning lanes, and of course, very good synergy with the partner, uh, partner there. But. Another attempt to go on the draw. Ranger, the Phoenix is not a terrible help here. Resolution does manage to pop a bunch of regen once again. The magic stick is really working out for him, but MSS, who would already use his dive to try and cover the draw Ranger's retreat, is easy food instead. Yeah, not one of the strongest uh, supports. Of course, like a Bane and a, a Phoenix kind of in the same draft, like mm -hmm. a little bit unusual. Like I feel like a lot of Phoenixes are getting relegated to the five roll, but um, in this case, it is theoretically a four for MSS, but obviously not um, one of the greedier ones that he gets to play. Just not that great in laning. Yeah. I think the only one. reason they picked that up is because they saw Nigma and they were like, eh. I mean, it's not going to be a real heavy pressure draw lane, because otherwise Phoenix draw sounds really bad for yes. Ladyface. Yeah. That just sounds like awful. Jeez, and you Pasha, can definitely though. see it here. Yeah, Pasha's just slaying it right now. I love uh, Enigma players that really focus on every single deny. Uh, it just gets completely out of control with the eidolons and everything, but uh, that that's experience for you, right? Like, yeah. You should be getting as many as possible. No, the other arrow combination solo will end up going down. So our Morphling is uh, kind of swap lanes now. He's tired of this situation. Ramses will head out there in Enigma. I'm not sure if he goes top lane or if they give that to the support and Enigma starts jungling, but they are going to be able to force MSS. Oh, no, he doesn't even have to dive away. It's okay Yeah, just drives him back with that Invis room. It's not going to find anything with that. And uh, we're, we're relatively even across the board here. We didn't really check out the whole mid lane that much, but Visage has now become a hero, has level six, and likewise Zeus uh, can be popping that ulti, perhaps if a, a smoke gank looks good, but that invis actually still gets them something more by popping solo smoke. <laughs> Solo's like, Don't really? ward solo. <laughs> He's like, you're still here? What's happening? This is no longer a lane that uh, no one can play in, I believe. Once the Visage gets level six, yeah. Like, you have no threatening power against the Visage anyway, because your nuke doesn't do a whole lot to the Visage when he's got Cloak up. He could, like, just get dove by yeah. Phoenix, and he's actually dead. Yeah, like, like, like a, a any small slow. movement speed Anything. slow is all it takes. <laughs> Wait, he placed the ward. I, I guess maybe he thought his smoke got popped by someone mid? I'm not sure. Huh. Well, he's probably dead. Don't tell him he's going to get universal. Oh. oh, okay, there goes Suzu's ultimate finally, and solo. Just trying to get some damage on MSS before he shortly goes down. Oh, so yeah, the kill on Universe from Zeus. Okay, very nice. Well, no one's going to return back to this mid lane, but he certainly can't get close, and it does mean Skullberg will take that mid tier 1 tower at 7 minutes in. Not terribly surprising with a Dro and a Visage lineup, but it is uh, perhaps a little bit earlier than expected. Again, just you just don't have the heroes to defend. Yeah, now the question becomes, what can you do with Visage now? Okay. Where do we go? Are we just gonna like all snowball into a tower? Is that the plan? Or are you just gonna like try and farm up and do an aura to help the rest of your team join in on that? It looks like he's going for the classic helm. He's very well in dress rats. Jesus, this draw ranger is just getting attacked everywhere. They are refusing to let him get to level six. Oh, that hit! Oh, what? All right, that's an arrow that just nails him. Roger will fall. Could not step to the side fast enough, but it seems MSS does have a dive. He will be able to uh, do a little distance. Ramsey just follows him. Tit for tat there, but Fire Spirits. Actually giving MSS some time here, just trying to... <laughs> I'm not he's sure like, what he's trying to do, um, just buy time, I guess. Right. He's like, I don't like, know. He, I'm not sure if he's making it out of here or not. Moonlight Shadow, okay, maybe he does escape. Okay, I think uh, Ramsey's missed like three CS because of that, so. And in they, the end, it was kind of good. And they didn't get the tower right. He pulled some the creep oh, yeah. aggro off mm, a little bit. And give him the tip. Sleep up. Arrow out. Leap down. Bop, 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 bop. That's uh, Zeus dead. I think uh, a lot of the games recently... Uh, Whoa, Pasha really going for the black hole with Ramses TPing in. He'll make short work of Excalibur. No matter how many wand charges he has, there's still... Oh, he doesn't have a way for him. Did he actually get out the bottom lane? They're actually going to turn around. Nice storm bolt out from Roger. Trying to go for the body block. MSS misses it for a moment. The extra war cry movement speed. And Excalibur does get out. They just didn't have the extra mana with a waveform. Nice sleep into an arrow. Jeez, killing spree already. I think, uh, like, Forev has been playing this, like, killer offlane heroes. I feel like, like, the Forev Mirana has just looked so crazy um, oh, yeah. in many of their games. So th th this is what this is looking like to me uh, from Universe, honestly. Oh, here it is. Our downtown area. You can't even see Mirana. She's way out of there. Gets uh, woken up, but doesn't even matter. They woke him up so quickly. Pasha was really good on that with the idol. Yeah, but he just didn't see the arrow coming, I guess. 
Didn't even try and move. Do you know what I saw the other day is you can wake people up with Venno wards and the ward doesn't get the nightmare. <laughs> well, of course not gonna. But I didn't even think it would work. Like you can still yeah, target yeah. and the nightmare just vanishes. It's that's like, funny. Well, there you go, guys. Clearly, that's the answer versus Bane. Tip for your pups. Support Venno. Smoke up. Gonna run into the Bane. Stormbolt starting things off. Almost it's gonna be tough here to kill for these two supports because they just don't have damage at all. No, I mean that's what Zeus is for, for sure. I mean, yeah. They but, don't have uh, not gonna be enough, so. Okay. Okay. Roger oh, nice. going back in, trying to get some wards down. Finally throws out the Storm Bolt. No one is gonna be showing up soon. The arrow is gonna miss onto Roger. They do manage to pick up that arcane root on MSS. He's gotta get out of here. No Man. one. How is he surviving at like level four? I'm like, does he have raindrops or something? Like, I feel like this Phoenix should just be dead. You know, you you yeah. self-sacrifice HP. You're up against a Zeus. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty shocked that he keeps on managing to slip away here, and they I mean, are going to smoke To be honest, there's just not a ton of damage, right? If the Zeus isn't uh, isn't close enough for the Lightning Bolt. Uh, that smoke just got completely revealed, by the way. Yeah. They all just smoked my shrine. Instantly got pinged because the Thunder Gods were at. But yeah, it's true. He's uh, very good spacing so far, and it looks like he'll get six here under the tower. Excalibur is camping out now in the top lane. I'm a bit surprised they haven't taken another tower yet. That's my problem. I don't know. It feels like this happens with a lot of Visage games where, like, you look at the net worth, like, how is Zeus above the Visage with how that went? You know what I mean? Like, Visage got the tower and everything, too. Close range arrow, Star Storm. Just do that. Still above the Visage. <laughs> Double drop with the familiars. They do manage to get that tower. Just the single drop and using the other familiar to help secure the CS. Pasha. Nice supernova timing, though, but Roger, <sighs> they might be able to do it, the two of them, but now with the Enigma dead, maybe he won't get it. Oh, oh, oh. it was just about to explode. Oh, that's so frustrating. Up back up to the top lane, Ramses, they're just hoping to force him to... Oh, he didn't even wait for him. He got Fiend's gripped first. Yeah, maybe, maybe a bit greedy there, not going for the shift first, I guess, but, I mean, who who catches you in the animation of wave form? He was like, oh, why not yeah. a little it looked like? Dyer's top tower well, our draw top ranger... It was a rough time, level four for so long. Spent some time in the jungle, has level six, now level eight. It's beginning to get some of those uh, big agility items, the starting stats, dreads, ring of Killa, the wraith ban. Yeah, I don't know, are forward committing to this? I mean, they brought all these heroes up top. There's another wave, but obviously that was the catapult that did so much before and now they will all back away. So not gonna force anything too crazy up here, but the pressure, hey, it did work out. Scott made a top lane rotation. They didn't kill him. It feels like this is, um, you know, any sort of a, a Visage lineup, but especially Drow Visage lineups. Um, if you lose that one fight at the tier two, it feels like the game's just over. So you wanna be as well prepped as possible. Do you think if forward went for the push at top lane that VP would have defended? Or do you think they just would have traded towers? I think they would probably defend, I would guess. Just because um, they have like such big team fight abilities. Yeah, yeah. they want to make use of them. Nice silence out before he gets the assist. Oh, man. Ramses is struggling right now. He really is. Um, I mean, that, that's pretty brutal. Like, instant silences like this, too. It's really not much you can do. And uh, they're going to feel forced to at least trade for this. They have TPs to Shrine, but that's currently covered by Excalibur. There is a decent amount of vision for the place here by SVG. I, I guess they can't fight this. DD rune on universe will make it uh, an even harder choice. There's not enough time. They glyphed on the catapult wave too, so they had already lost that. Now that this becomes a Roche game for a VP, where they have to be like constantly vigilant over the Roche pit if they want to make good use of these abilities. Four man smoke up. They're gonna just sweep on through. They've got the supernova, winter's curse, black hole. There's a lot of team fight on both sides here. There's just a question of where the initiation goes. MSS gonna be spotted, but he's already dove away. They do manage to get some extra vision now from the Zeus ultimate. And Universe is already at half HP before the fight begins in earnest, but VP just couldn't get the initiation that they really wanted. Yeah, now that means that uh, there's like Moonlight Shadow if they want to go a little bit aggressive here with the Thunder God's Wrath being down. Uh, there is some vision stacked up on Roger though. He's got sentries and dust. Oh, actually he's now used Observer's sentries. They will catch an Observer War just as expiring, so he'll get the refund on that. And Ramses goes back to uh, his safe lane here, but hasn't been very safe so far. Zero, three, and one. And here they come. An aggressive smoke forward. I'm not sure if that dire mid ward spotted any of that, but as Ramsey's running into it, uh, maybe they didn't. The arrow just before he managed to get a waveform out. Now the jump forward actually still caught inside the winner's curse even after that leap. So the Bane SVG gets quite low. 
Another Storm Bolt trying to finish him off. Roger thinking about it, but not going to try and commit for the kill because he knows that the Fire Spirits is going to come eventually. And now he's going to be slowed down too much with the Familiars chasing him out. Ramses tries to come in with the Fire Spirits a little bit, diving out, but he knows his support is dead. At least it forced out the Supernova a bit. And uh, I mean, they, yes, they get the near kill and the save at first because of the Winner's Curse, and Ramsey able to escape, but that cost Solo his life. Now 13 to 3, a 4K lead. Coming up to take a fight at a tower that um, was already lost. I guess they were trying to like, clear out their own jungle. It did kind of work. They got rid of a lot of the vision that was placed there by 4Game, but now they've taken their objective anyway. They don't really need to play here unless they're hunting for Ramses. Yeah. The prize is mine. Seems like Virtus Pro Pasha is just going to continue to play on this right hand side of the map, and they're going to have Morphling up at top, and they'll just try and. Split push by time, I'm guessing, because right now, forward, I mean, the world's are oyster, right? You just keep on running down Haste. towers. As long as you don't get too overzealous, you should be stronger than VP. Yeah, you basically, like, I think EG uh, showed a really good example in the very first game of the day where they were so far ahead, but they never went to Roche, because the only way they lost that game was some, like, weird team fight and a very yeah. clustered AoE. So they just never went Roche. I mean, how often do you see teams go high ground and they're taking Roche? And, it wasn't just because they were so far ahead. It was just because, like, they knew that's the one chance. So forward, as long as they're cautious about those opportunities, then it's going to be very difficult for Virtus Pro. Earn on Phoenix, but Virtus Pro. They're trying to move in through this area, and if they can actually get the right team fight, they can go and take that tower. But it requires the right kind of initiation, and again, they just don't quite get it. Lightning Bolt reveals SVG, but he's far and away outside of the range of Storm Bolt. I like how they're controlling the bottom half of the map, though, and they're not being punished. Forward aren't just instantly going in Roche or anything like that. Like, so far, this has been a pretty big win for Virtus Pro, I would say, because now you see all forward are just, like, stacked around the Roche pit and around their Tier 1, but the majority of VP are farming at the moment. So Excalibur's going to get it started. They should be able to do Roshan pretty quickly, but as you said, at the same time, Virtus Pro was already set up with their push at bottom, so it means uh, we will be trading out that tier two, most likely. As there's no need for a forward to go into a fight at this bottom lane where Virtus Pro is already set up. After all, they can just push down mid, threaten a tier two of their own. And our Aegis is on Excalibur, so we can be that little Siege Engine Visage. Likes to be up on the front lines, has a soul, uh, or rather a Solar Crest too, so. One downside though, being able to take that Tier 2 for Virtus Pro, is that now you, you start putting damage on Tier 3, and so you know almost every single push, significant creep wave push that comes out into that bottom lane, Forward is going to be forced to defend that because they just don't want to let any chip damage start happening on a tier three, right? That's just yeah. like how all of a sudden you end up trading racks for racks is you let the chip damage do its work at first. And they, I mean, they have the Enigma for that. Which is certainly a possible hero if he's able to play down that zone. Uh, mm -hmm. They have great vision down there. They've made a complete ring of observers just like saying, okay, if anyone comes into that uh, raining jungle, we're going to know about it. Wyvern's good at nuking down waves as well, right? So he's another hero that can just kind of shove things out for them. So forward are going to have to make some efforts to be able to uh, deal with that. Yeah, you can see that I think in like the Shadow Blade coming up from Resolution is one good option. Moonlight Shadow, but going to be revealed by the Zeus Ultimate, SVG hit by the Malphys. And that'll be a kill for Pasha. That's uh, their first kill in quite a while, I believe. <laughs> yeah. It's not been a uh, super fun game for Virtus Pro this first 20 minutes. But the game isn't uh, out of their hands too nope. much, right? It's only 4,000 gold lead considering the tower advantage, which I think it's like one tower advantage right now for uh, for forward gaming. It's not the yeah, worst it thing feels though. like more, but I guess just because they're like controlling so much and like the way that um, every time forward was getting a tower, it was like after Radiant kills Radiant and tower. VP were like just getting kind of like rebound towers. They're like, oh, okay, well, there's some space down here. We can get this. But right. They were always losing a little bit more, but heading later and later, um, drafts relative. I, I would prefer to favor the Virtus Pro one. I don't think like forward game, you know, I don't think the draft is terrible heading later, but uh, I'd rather have the, the old Morph and Zeus on my team. Yeah, it's definitely one of those lineups that if forward, you start pushing past like 35, 40 minutes, you got to have a significant net worth lead. And Phoenix MSS is able to dive away, but still hit by the Lightning Bolt, has Malphys on him. MSS, well. He could have popped the Supernova, but didn't really want to waste it like that. Instead, yeah. he just dies to an Arc Lightning hit. 
It's always a tough question there. I, he already had enough gold even after his death for the spirit vessels, so he might have just been looking at that and be like, yeah, I'd rather just get right back into a fight. That is the one thing is like I hate it when Phoenixes use Supernova. When it's guaranteed. Gonna yeah, they're yeah. going to die anyway, and it's like that's still a big team fight spell. So understandable that, yeah, maybe MSS could have survived there, but he wants to be able to hold on to that team fight opportunity. Yeah, the last thing they want to do right now is give Virtus Pro any sort of space. Yeah. Uh, this Vistage just wants to constantly be in a lane, pushing an objective, hitting a tower, so that's why we're all uh, grouping up down bottom and opting for that once again. We're almost into the Siege Waves, too, where he can helm up uh, another catapult for them, too. And he's pretty much their only, like, really big uh, high cooldown teamfight spell, right? So everything else is like, oh, their other heroes are not bad at teamfight. Yeah. It's only because they're kind of early game heroes. Excalibur already down to half HP. The arrow's going to come in, does manage to land on the Enigma, but the Visage is going to be dying here. That's just the Aegis, though. With the dive coming out, the Supernova out, a cold embrace. Roger's not going to be able to do anything. He's just sitting there burning up slowly, but surely he will be the first of all on the side of Virtus Pro. Okay. Good. Pretty good trade. Oh, MSS. In the middle of this engagement, has the, the presence of mind to go and snag that bounty rune. Throws down a, oh, that was an arrow, and he doesn't have the strength morph going down. He's just going to get bursted by the Star Storm. What a hit from Universe. Now they're going to be able to clean up the Enigma as well. Forward now have broken Virtus Pro, I believe, with the buyback of Sven. I still don't think they're going to be able to defend this Tier 1 tower. So forward. Get the team yeah. fight that was necessary to claim some more objectives. Now, oh, very nice arrow there. And didn't even see it coming whatsoever, despite all the vision and everything. Rambi's getting hit. He was doing really well up top, right? He'd been surviving a couple more gusts this time, always getting it off, but it's very difficult when you don't even see the arrow coming. That vision from the arrow, I don't think wide enough to spot uh, no one, so. Not only the tier one, but the tier two. Again, yeah, he did grab that second catapult. Question is, uh, you know, can't go too much further. Oh, geez. Oh, Sorry, Winter's curse. <laughs> bye bye. That is one of the downsides of playing Vistage against the Winter Wyvern. Arrow. Oh, it actually lands it on the Winter Wyvern, but the Zeus here already spamming out some damage. Goes out the Yules. They have the Storm Bolt. Sue, if they can just get vi good vision of him, they might be able to catch Universe here. Malthus, and finally Storm Bolt comes out. That is a mega kill streak given to Roger. So a decent boost of gold, as well as the. Uh, well, try to go for the Vistage Familiars as well. That's a pretty good hero for it, too, honestly, uh, in terms of like how the team's going. A blink dagger on Sven obviously changes him by quite a bit. <laughs> that arrow. What Jeez. a hit. You can see the immediate buyback from Roger as forward start pushing him, yeah. but it just doesn't matter. Right? And uh, you saw when Enigma died, he had the Crimson Guard pop up, so it was like sitting in his stash. Like, what an incredible item versus a draft strat, and mm. one of the more important fights in the entire game. Uh, Could have been quite different had he had it. But uh, forward, you know, they just took two towers in the bottom lane, they go over to their handy playing drow lineup flow chart, and they look down and they say, oh, there's are there still towers outside of the base? <laughs> yes, kill the towers. It's really that simple. So we know the next target that it will be. Uh, and they've got after. Supernova for it too, right? So no reason not to go for this. It's always uh, I always find it hard when playing Enigma to be able to get good black holes off against. Ooh. He's going to try and wake himself up, but the Fiend's Grip is already there, and Solo can't really do anything to stop it. He just called a brace. Winter's Curse on a creep, trying to grab some heroes or something, but Posh is dead. Pasha, the uh, second time now that he's been a bit too far forward and gets caught. That, that was uh, as desperate you, as you see in I think. I don't know what that Winter's Curse was. <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe our Zeke never got out of the chair. <laughs> Like the only, that's the only thing I can imagine. I don't know. Tried. All right, well, our flow chart, I think it kind of skipped a step. Normally you look at, uh, maybe we get the Tekken Roshan or something, but hey, a team fight like that, all of a sudden, bada bing, bada boom, you're hitting the tier three, you've unlocked shrines, but they don't want to be too greedy. They don't want to get caught in a nasty team fight as the Enigma comes up, and we know Roger is waiting for an overextension like that with this invisibility room that he picked up. It's going to wear out soon, though. So we may never find that initiation. Sure enough, he's going to retreat. There's so much pressure on the Wyvern in this game because your Enigma is not going for any sort of like blinks or anything like that. He's just doing this aura build, which is a great build, but that means that he's relying on a Winter's Curse to set up a decent black hole. Right. Um, and so that means you have to play like aggressive as the Wyvern. It can't constantly be these like defensive black holes on one hero or even just killing the Bane or something. Like you got to get the double core, you got to get that black hole down. And See, he doesn't even work. have the, the Blink Dagger on Roger to, like, force yeah, exactly. something first. That would be like, nice. The idea being, like, Roger blinks forward and he throws out a stun or something, that's going to force forward to, to react in some way, right? But right now it's just entirely solo, like, go in, buddy. Just just like that. 
Yeah, looking for that chaos factor or something. Opening runs into the right combination of heroes that will allow Go him to get Roger. a good Winter's Curse, Roger. Dude, this sick position four. <laughs> you see that initiation? All right, they're going to sleep up, apparently. Sunray out. Just uh, some good poke damage. Now there's no way that Virtus Pro are going to be feeling comfortable taking a team fight unless something crazy happens. They actually go back in, trying to blow up Excalibur, and they do manage to get him. He will be blown up by that Morphling. He's already got the Shrink Morph, too. He's going to be okay against some of that damage. Yes, the Winter Wyvern is dead, but so far it's a good exchange, especially with the buyback already out for the Winter Wyvern, and they're laying so much damage into a Morphling who's still getting away. They're trying to chase him down with one familiar right now while the Zeus is getting lots of damage on these supports. The Bane's already dead. Rance is going to be healed up by the Cold of Brace. Now that is definitely oh, not a man. hero you can take out. Roger, hit by the Fire Spirits, says, it's okay, guys. I have Storm Bolt. I'll throw it on that Phoenix. We'll finish him off too. Forward. Just put the damage on the wrong hero and lose a team fight as a result. Reza's just like, how am I losing a fight where I just got a three-man gust? Where is my team? And yeah. that was without the black hole still. That pre that was a classic situation of the pressure of having the black hole. Mm. It just kept this really awkward pacing around the Enigma where they're like, he's almost dead, but they just like run away because the two look at black hole, and then they run back in and couldn't, as you said, just spreading the damage, knocking the consistent targets down there. And I mean, you also can't put not push your damage onto a Zeus, yes. right? Like, <laughs> he's literally just sitting on the, on the right side. He's like, Blink. he sees the enemy all running out of Morphling. He's like, okay, cool. Time to lightning bolt some fools. And that means Blink Tiger is just about done here for Roger. So perhaps the game will change. GPM talent for the Enigma, too. Um, they lost the tier three, though, which does mean the Shrines uh, will be the next target here for forward gaming in their flowchart. And then the second Roche, which has a very conveniently placed DD next to it at the moment. And, oh, wow. <laughs> hey, guys. Like mana from heaven. Resolution <laughs> says, well, that was a rough team fight, guys. What we could really use now is a Roshan. And Ice Frog delivers. But uh, everything's up now except for the Undergod's Wrath. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Oh, Ramses. Oh. This Moonlight Shadow is making this oh, no. game rough for him. What's going on with my Wyvern? Where are my sentries at, Solo? What, what's happening here? This is, uh, Moonlight Shadow is supposed to be a dead spell now because these, these lovely sentry blue wards last six minutes and your whole map is just gets covered in them. That's all uh -huh. you do is position five. So you're saying it's Solo's fault because he bought a, uh, he bought a he bought tranks instead of more, uh, <laughs> more sentries? Uh, basically, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's Ramsey's fault for going outside the, the blue zone. That's true, that's the true. The safety zone. Another opportunity for uh, forward to go into the high ground. Ten seconds left as the little Morphling's back up. But it, it is just a lot of long-range damage being thrown down, right? There's Splinter Blast, there's Zeus, Arc Lightning. They even throw out a Midnight Pulse on some pushes. It's tough to be getting onto that high ground area. Yeah, definitely. To hit the uh, I mean, how do you initiate with this radiant line? Obviously, they've been doing ex extremely well, but I feel like most of it has come from like a, a weird pickoff. Like the first 20 minutes of this game were basically nightmare arrows, and then let's go push a tower. <laughs> yeah. Like, how many catches did they get over and over together? Uh, you can't do that when they're actually sitting on the high ground. Right. Instead, you just get really fat. All right, well, buffet table is open forward. They've got the whole map available to them. So you think that's just what they're going to do for the Don't next? they got a pick off, I guess. I mean, what else in. can you do? That's true. They could go and, like, chip away a little bit. I guess, like, so, the visage, but... So if they don't find the pick off, what do you bet? Do you think they'll actually still try and force it? Because they're like, ah, oh, we have ages. We should probably, probably go high ground anyway. Yeah, they'll probably wait till the AC, I would guess. Um, yeah. And then that's a really good moment. Like the four staff, so they can try and bait out a bad play. They have a nine second BKB from Universe, so. Yeah, they, they certainly aren't just going to wait forever, but uh, you'll have to be a little bit more uh, you know, tailored with your push, I suppose, with this Aegis. They've got another three minutes to do it. Some uh, update on items we do have. Almost taking down our Winter Wyvern. That's going to be solo dead. Resolution, man, just get the high ground hit. Well, they had the sentries. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's always a critical talent. Level 20, once you have the Aghanim Scepter on the Zeus. Oh, yeah, speaking of which, I guess we're still waiting on that, eh? Uh, the, the morph target allies. The double Nimbus. If they can hold Rax till double Nimbus, I'm calling it. Just got a double midnight BP. pulse. They got all kinds of stuff okay, going on. Okay. I mean, once he has BKB2, that's really going to help, right? Yes, most certainly. Uh, at this rate, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about this game. I kind of feel like forward are going to finish it. 
I think they're going to get it done in time. Well, he just lost one familiar. They're trying to put damage on this melee Rax, but also look to be retreating. So that's going to get regened up. Another 200 gold for Virtus Pro. Still holding an 11,000. Oh, there's going to be your initiation with the Nimbus at the same time. They managed to get a ton of damage already onto the Marana, but leaps away. Pops the BKB arrow. Oh, oh, that was a slap target, and he whiffed it. Pasha will be able to get off the Crimson Guard, get silenced up. Supernova on top of him as well. Ramses is going to try and eat through that Supernova. Oh, it's going to be a close call, but he managed to get it. Pasha will survive as a result, thanks to no stun coming out. Resolution turns, managed to kill the Zeus. Ramses almost dies here. Cold Embrace, that'll buy him a little bit of time. Now the Winter's Curse placed on the Drone Ranger, allowing Ramses to be able to get away with the buyback coming out from no one. He's going to lay that magic damage into resolution. There is going to be an Aegis, but SVG, he is slowed down a little bit by the Splinter Blast, but they want to focus on this Draw Ranger. Oh, no, he does not have Just throw everything. Throw down the Black Hole. Make sure there's no way that carry will survive Excalibur and Universe. They know their Draw Ranger is dead. They tried to retreat fast enough to make sure no one else got caught, but Excalibur was going to get caught anyway. He's going to be chased down by the Waveform. That is going to be four dead on the side of forward. Oh, it's going to be so much experience for Morph. Like, he was level 17. He's almost 19 now, thanks to all that. What a huge save on that. I thought that fight was going to be over with the egg, and they were going to get the Enigma, and they uh -huh. just go high ground and start chipping away, because at that point, they would have lost a lot of their just, like, casual wave clear. But uh, major save from Ramsey with the attack speed boost. Barely gets that egg down in time. And then, of course, the, the chase uh, a bit too far in the drow. Yeah. Aegis not so good up on the high ground. No one being able to buy back there. Of course, Verdi's Pro, like, on the edge of, you know, losing a lane of Rack, so obviously everyone's going to try and hold on to buy back, but that one was definitely critical as well. They know they have high ground vision. They're going to be able to spot him. Nimbus down. And that is Bane down as well. So Verdi's Pro going to get not one, but now probably two towers. Oh, and a 10-second BKB for a Morphling. Forward gaming. Yeah. Unless you get Fiend's Grip on him, like, uh, that Supernova's just not going to survive. Right? Yeah. He's basically like a Marana, where he has a mobility spell and he has really fast attack speed. Roger goes for the, the bold leap in there. And it's a run back right now. Just all the way straight, tier one, tier two, into a tier three. Uh oh. Silence. Oh. A lot of damage there. Okay, he had Manta, that's why I stopped attacking. That makes sense. They won't quite finish up that tier three, it looks like. The Siege Wagons should be dealt with quickly. Nice discipline there from Virtus Pro. Obviously seeing how yeah. far uh, a single loss can take you for forward. Forward demonstrating quite well. Yeah. well now we almost have a Blink Tagger on Solo as well. That's going to make things pretty nasty oh, for on. forward again. That's like 20 centuries. I, I, don't, I don't know about <laughs> that, dude. That's, that's a questionable decision here by Solo. <laughs> Ramsey's telling him right now. It's like, how no, am dude, I going to get gold? Listen to me. <laughs> Blink Dagger is not the item. Centuries. More centuries. Oh, look at this. Pitiful. Uh, support gold spit. Okay, thanks, Layer. Yeah, I get it. They're spending a lot of gold. Always got Wait, the I thought you were a support back. player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why are you mocking the support <laughs> player life? You're sounding dude, like I some so thug. I had the funnest game lately. I was Ogre. I just bought centuries. It's like <laughs> snowballing mid buys a Shadow Blade. Game's just over because he can't play. Uh, <laughs> You sounded like a real Chad core player right yeah. there for a moment, Trent. Well, I hear enough of them. But I can do a great impression. <laughs> ah, okay, so, okay. Yeah, I get it. You bought wards, bro. <laughs> 21 of 15, a 4,000 gold lead right now. Apparently, Zeus and Winter Wyvern are missing. Universe is very specific on that. I'm not sure why, but it looks like uh, forward. Maybe we're planning to go for some smoke action, are still going to do it, despite the fact they got spotted by the Zeus ultimate. But sometimes it just doesn't matter. You want to make a play? Gonna make a play. And Virtus Pro is outside of their base, so. You gotta do something to offset the clear initiation advantage for Virtus Pro in this next team fight. And yeah, just the vision killing them at this point. Aeon disconnects for the Zeus, I like that. So no one just get a sticky situation. To be honest with you, Trent, I don't know how a uh, forward start the next fight unless they like smoke run into a, a hero or something like yeah it kind of comes back to that whole like they won the first 20 minutes literally off nightmare arrow that's pretty much what it was yeah it was just constantly over and over because in the laning stage and in that like build-up phase everyone's so split up but now that you've just got this clump of virtus pro and they've equalized the net worth they don't have that pressure of being split and farming then yeah it's a great question it's like there's so many auras now there's bkbs 
what to do. Roger's just gonna go straight into the high ground. He doesn't care. He's gonna make himself a focus. That way the rest of Verdi's crew pro can play off of that chaos solo. Blinking back down into the low ground. They're still not trying to go for Ramses though. Excalibur is gonna be caught, separated from the rest of his team. He is pretty tanky, but they're trying to focus on right now with the Winter's Curse intercepting a lot of those heroes. They will be able to focus down Excalibur because look at him. They just can't get past the Winter's Curse. Now with the BKB activated from Resolution, he tries to come forward, but quickly regrets it. Nice push back there, but oh, Fiend's Grip Supernova on the high ground as well. They can't deal with the egg fast enough. Maybe the Drone Ranger can actually get the space to land the damage, and that's exactly what's happening. They managed to finish up the Enigma. He now turns towards Ramses, who's going to turn into a Mirada, a leap away, but Roger is putting damage onto Resolution. Oh, he managed to get a Hurricane Pike away. The arrow, oh no, the Phoenix getting caught. Ramses is going to be able to run him down, actually turning into a Mirada for a moment. Very low, but it doesn't matter. He had the Star Storm damage, and okay, maybe it does matter. MSS had the dive away and has a TP so he can hide some other trees arrow? and get out. No. No, the but he spots him. That's all they need. I have TP. TP. He's nice. good. He's good. He's good. Wow. All right, slightly close there. Uh, looks like that's still going to be about a 2100 gold swing ish for all Virtus Pro. Chaos. Roger just hopped in there. He's like, we're just having a fight. You guys don't get to pick your perfect initiation. The eggs have been very defensive throughout this game, too. Even that egg. It was like, the fight's going a little bit poorly. I have to egg up here. And it looked like for a moment, Rezo was going to have the damage. But mm -hmm. just couldn't clean up that morphing in time. He held his morph for so long, too. So there's always that like second health bar being available. And he got the escape mechanism of the leap. I think in, the, in these situations, Excalibur has to embrace him being the pseudo-initiator. And I'm saying his initiation is pretty much going, attack face, me. The face tank. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. Because I like look at everyone else on the team. Like, Dro cannot be there. Marana, obviously, <laughs> nothing you can really do. You open land an arrow, but yeah. that's about it. You can't supernova to start a fight, because that's just, it's going to be cleaned up so quickly. It won't, it'll be inconsequential. And this is why it's very rare to actually see the five-man ranged drought lineup. Yeah. They're really not that common. There tends to be a centaur in there, or an earthshaker, or someone who's just gotta get in there. Even uh, even just Undyings, right? Yeah, like the Undying Drow Ranger is a duo that's been pretty potent right that's now. That's a March Dota right there. Exactly. That's, you that's just you run in there. <laughs> I'm gonna die, guys. I got two tombstones off. Let's go. Verdis Pro. They're gonna run into Moonlight Shadow forward gaming. If there's any opportunity for them to win a fight, it would be this one right now where the Invis goes undetected. Resolution pops BKB. Hoping to be able to deal with Pasha fast enough. The Supernova on the side. Pasha not feeling like he can go for the BKB just yet, but no one's already blown up the Bane. And they're saving Pasha until an arrow comes in. Locks him down. The Cold Embrace just not gonna be good enough. The BKB fading now for Ramses, but does manage to finish off Excalibur first. Now gonna wait for him into the enemy. Willing to take the fight because how tanky he is. He's already been silenced up as a Mirada. Managed to pop the Manta though. Hit by the Familiars. He's not gonna be able to swap back. He is dead now for 80 seconds, right around that Roshan pit. Virtus Pro have the opportunity to take control of the game, but losing their Morphling means they lose control of the Roshan pit now. Dude, how did he not take double Nimbus? I'm so upset right now. He took the wave form attacks targets. What are you, what are you doing to me, Ramses? <laughs> Surely, that's got to be the better play. I, I'm pretty stunned. Like, get the refresher share, this triple Nimbus. All, All right. right, I'll be honest with you, Trent. I have no idea. You're 100% it works that way? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm a, I'm a hundred percent. I bl uh, you get ogre multicast for some damn reason, and you get Nimbus. <laughs> I don't know why, but I promise you that's what happens. All right, then shame. Yeah, then shame. Like way solo. At least forward does not feel comfortable enough taking. Uh, or, well, maybe with an MSS. Shiva's initiation like this. Winter's Curse just stopping forward from trying to get the initiation in. The Phoenix was already slowing him down enough. They were a little bit scared of that fight. No one's joining them now, though. They're going to try and recover off this side area. Now the jump in from Rogers. Looking to be able to blow up. Does manage to get the Bane first thing first. Resolution has to turn and go for the Sven instead with a Cold Embrace placed on a Solo. Solo immediately blinks after the Cold Embrace. So it's going to be a support for a support. Okay. That's all on Morph is dead, though. So that's a pretty big win for VP, I would say. Like, yeah. that you're pulling them away from the Roche pit. No Supernova while you still have Black Hole. I'm not convinced that they can do Roche on themselves, though, on the side of Virtus Pro. They can definitely do it very quickly. However, they, yeah. they can't do it if there's any sort of contest. So, like, mm -hmm. if they can catch forward away from the pit or they can get enough pickoffs that doesn't matter and Ramses can go, like, super low and just, like, race the, the Roche, then that's fine. Yeah. But he can't be in there at, you know, 700 HP doing Roche if they're nearby. And it also feels like one of those situations where Virtus Pro don't need to Roche on. Like, they win the game Definitely. by stopping forward from Roching. Or they can win the game by actually getting Roche on themselves. But all that matters is just, like, yeah. preventing the, the Aegis. They could deny this Aegis 
and yeah. I think they win. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I feel you. Moonlight Shadow gonna, gonna go down. Winter Wyvern gonna be taken out first here. That is a good start. That's a big team fighter already out. The Nimbus is gonna be dealt with as they just wanna play this left hand side of the map knowing that Virtus Pro is willing to commit everything to keep this Roshan fight intact. And that's why wow. the Winter Wyvern bought back. I mean, they, they not only they steal the gem away from Solo, but there was already like this perfect dire ward right at the bottom of those stairs where they are playing right now. And they just kill it. They're like, oh, sweet. Thanks to the gem, dude. That was absolutely terrifying. Roshan marching out of the pit. Who wants to kill me? Why isn't anyone on Team Rosh? Oh, man, that's a third Roshan refresher shard, too. I forgot about that. All right, we're going to smoke up, wrap around, but that's where Virtus Pro is. Roger's going to make it. It's initiation with the Moonlight Shadow. They have actually done so much damage already, but the Phoenix will be able to get off the Supernova. The BKB activated by Ramses. He'll deal with the egg as quick as possible, and he does have it down. Sure, Roger's going to go down, but Ramses still on the front line. He's already dealt with the Draw Ranger as well as the Phoenix. Five acts from both of them. He's been hit by an arrow, though. Excalibur's trying to get some damage onto him. The bot, the Black Hole, is going to be able to lock down both him as well as the birds. They turn, finish off Excalibur, and poor SJW. Well, he's already on the wrong side of things. SVG will fall. And that just leaves the three a forward. Yeah, they, he keeps holding this black hole for so long. I really like the way Pasha's been playing. I'm um, just like keeping that very key moment of the fight where maybe there's like a chance of a turnaround or something, and he just zoned out everyone else. Yeah. Brings down Excalibur, fight's just over. Um, I can't believe they just won a fight where they just took a Phoenix from 100 to 20%, still get off the ultimate, and still somehow you win. That's a very good sign of your, uh, your team fight versus the opponent team right now. And they three up with no Supernova. There's no way they can contest Roshan. Arrow will just kind of fly in, scouts it out, but it will belong to Virtus Pro. And uh, they'll, they'll just take it all. Aegis on the Morphling, Cheese, and Refresh Jar. But uh, he'll hand that off. We see that last team fight again. I mean, the Supernova going off, like, just barely doesn't actually change things now, right? Because really good Winter's Curse, first of all, stalling up the Draw Ranger's damage at that point. They don't have the best um, follow up to the egg, too. Like, uh, Phoenix has been very successful lately, as, uh, well, you know, sorry to curse the RMSS, but. Uh, the Barat down, but uh, a lot of the teams that are picking Phoenix and winning with it are just getting these like super sweet follow up skills. And, and Forward have been one of them, but. Whoa, Ramses. All right, all right. Don't Ops play with me here, Ramses. Doesn't lose that Aegis too early. Oh, but that double! They made it take that's down Draw Ranger, and there goes SVG as well. That's the dieback. And that's the end of the game. Oh, how quickly things can turn with the old Drow Strat. I think yeah. you have to credit like how well they really did play that first like 25 minutes because you know as, as cheesy as Drow Strats kind of can be, it was relatively flawless mm -hmm. uh, at, to a point. And obviously we we breached that point and uh, Virtus Pro completely broke them. Very well played. You're seeing apparently this is one of the longer games of our very first day. Here to ESL one Hamburg, and this is just what happens with the Draw Ranger strat. As you were saying, like most of these Phoenix, they have some sort of ability that kind of covers them. Yeah. Some sort of AOE stun or something like that. There was birds here. Yeah. That was it. You you didn't have it here, and that's and it's mostly because Forward drafted that kind of lineup, right? Where they were like, we're winning this in the first 25 minutes of the game. Yeah. So there was no like team fight Phoenix really here. This yeah. was, I mean, it was early team fight Phoenix, but it was definitely not uh, when the game gets hired and there's actually attack speed. Phoenix. So was there any team fight that really stood out to you? Um, that was the one where, like obviously the Roshan fight, but it felt like the game was already trending the way of Virtus Pro. Yeah. Where was the fight that happened that kind of changed the game to yeah, Virtus Pro being the narrative? It was when they were retreating after one of those attempted high ground pushes yes. with the uh, the Visage Aegis and Roger just right. like jumped out and he just like created a fight at their shrine and he's like, then there's this chase down that begins, they get a couple of kills that they really needed. Um, that's when the game starts to turn because that's when we got into like this level he went from like 17 to 19 on the Morphling or something like that. Uh, they end up getting the BKB right after too, so. All right, well, you heard trends break down. Now to hear more from the panel. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I have to give massive props to one of our expert men on the panel because whilst we were watching that in the green room, we were studying the match in the first 20 minutes and I made a comment, forward gaming, smashing Virtus Pro right now. And Fog said to me, Wait till Morphling gets 20. Because if he gets there, Virtus Pro crushed them. Guess what? That's why we have experts on this program. 
I'd love to take credit for it, but he didn't take the talent I was thought he was going to. I thought he was going to take more of Target's allies, and I thought he was going to turn into Wyverns and Zeus and stuff like that, but he didn't. Yeah. We know that you do get Nimbus, but you have to stay in the Zeus form in order to take the damage See, from it. See, you didn't it need all, to but... give that away. You yeah, could have just gone with it and been like, I'm an yeah, honest man, yeah. Paul. I'm, you know. I'm an honest man. Yeah. No, in all seriousness, uh, I actually thought it was an excellent, excellent game by forward. I think just some small mistakes ended up losing them that one, but I love the way they played that whole early game, the pressure they put on. They were just not allowing Ramses to play Dota pretty much. Every time he showed his face in a lane, the Bane came over and it was just like sleep into Arrow or beautiful Fiends groups time and time again. They were playing very, very control, very good control about the map. I felt like it was actually like one little mistake around that shrine area that I think they closed up on at the end there where I saw Universe miss the arrow on a sleep slap yep. target and they overextended past the base. And I, I don't really want to like just put everything down onto one play there, but that missed arrow into an overextension by Rezo. They lose their Aegis, humongous comeback for VP and then, yeah. I mean, like you say, they put it on one player because actually Universe had a good game outside of that. And awesome. some of the arrows early on as well were just unbelievably well placed. So yeah, th that's the purpose of uh, VP's draft anyways, that they picked better team fight knowing that like if they delay the game a bit and they get past this like, strong period in the mid game where or early mid game where, where gyro strats are really good then it'll be fine for them and that's basically what ford gaming also wanted to do they they opened up with a drow and a marana knowing that like okay we've got our good combo and then they picked a hero that's gonna make sure that no matter what that lane dumpsters like a marana and a bane are gonna dumpster anybody if anyone yeah. of the enemy dual lane leaves a lane you've instantly got an arrow uh sleep in arrow if bane can get behind and get the sleep set up which he can because they was an offlane so there's so many different ways to approach through trees and that just super secured them in the early game then they're just crushing mid game and then just vp fell off a little bit until they got to late game and then it, everything kind of worked out you know? yeah. uh score one on screen 42 minute game uh universe the highlight on forward gaming 9 3 and 18 on that marana great game from him apart from the one big mistake at the end uh also on the other side uh i guess the standouts probably rams is 10 6 and 8 uh, 9 3 and 16 on the uh, Zeus as well. So uh, difficult stats wise, because yeah. you kind of go, yeah, it wasn't one of those stat kind of games. I mean, we had our, you know, we had our lovely Vlad talk saying, here. he's like, guys, I need a, I need an MVP for that match. Yeah. And me and Kevin look at each other like, I was thinking Marana, Marana, Marana. Wait, they lost. Wait, they uh, lost yeah. the game. Yeah, we were like, <laughs> can you do a Marana? Can you do an MVP for the losing team? I don't think it, it was, it was just, I but mean, great could. teamwork. I, I liked Pasha's itemization personally. I liked the, the Crimson Guard build. He held on to his black hole a lot of fights. He was just kind of this tanky presence, but. I thought it was, for them, it was much more of a team effort than on the side of four, where it was like yeah. Universe and SVG were kind of... Kind of we have, we have well, to pick but... one out, and we, we have picked out Ramses in the end, as the, as the okay. MVP, which, yeah, the, the Morphling... He caught back up. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. that was the point, where he caught back up and then became very dangerous, and they had to shut him down. They did shut him down towards the end as well. Again, does it come down to small things when you're playing a good team like that, Kevin? Is it is it those one missed arrow? Is it is it... Can you really pin it all on that? I mean, if you if you want another car, yes. Uh, and and I, I don't think Ramsey has necessarily played the best. There was a lot of early gank moments where he did kind of... It felt didn't feel like a Morphling game where he was a pain in the ass to kill. It felt like, oh, he made a couple of mistakes here and there. And it wasn't always really ungankable ganks. It would be like, they're gusting from nighttime at max range, or they're getting a Fiend's grip off just barely before he gets the waveform off, and maybe he didn't morph in. Like, things like that sometimes happened, where it didn't make him... He, he looked very killable at multiple courses of those early games. So I, I'd argue maybe... I don't know, there's probably lots of things going into that, like uh, really smart ganks with little resources, yeah. but I, I guess it, I would say no one definitely played really well. I think Zeus played really well, considering that he's up against a Visage, he didn't get fed, he was That's always true. checking for wards, like he, his KD8, the only time he died was like Bane rotations with Marana arrows, like... Mm -hmm. That it's, there's a lot of good players yeah. on, on the dire side. But okay. Um, that's a good point. We're going to head to a break in a moment. I just want to get your quick thoughts on... We were also talking during the draft, and we failed to mention, of course, they've got a new coach, and he is drafting. So uh, I understand he's kind of drafting mainly with the help of Ramses in the team, but maybe that's the, the reason that we had such different heroes this time around. It did feel very different. It did, typical, didn't it? It looked like yeah. a... It was like a team secret draft, where they're like, right. oh, pick all these team fight heroes and aim for the late game and win that. But it was instead on a different team, so maybe a good direction to push those guys since they are so talented. They made something like Sven uh, support look really good, moder moderately good in the early game, okay in the mid game, and then oh, good again in the late game. It's he good. has like a, it's a hard to like gauge too because a uh, support Sven has this like invisible impact in a lot of team fights because he's just war crying, and you're like, how much did it actually mitigate? I'm actually like trying to look up the numbers right. of what the percent <laughs> mitigation is. Well, afterwards, you you so. do that in the break because we've got plenty of time uh, while we take a break here uh, and pay some bills. When we come back, that will be game number two. Can Ford Gaming get themselves back in and on level terms in this best of two? Well, Virtus Pro, the defending champions, make it a 2 0 start to their defense of the campaign. We'll find out after the break.
Ну, 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 ну,